The sink port of Sandwich is one of the most complete medieval towns in England. Its rich history has stemmed from its closeness to mainland Europe, making it a natural port for continental trade and for the embarkation of the English navy, as well as an obvious target for invasion. The town grew as a prosperous trading and fishing port from the 7th century. The river store on which Sandwich stands was then far wider and deeper than today. A thriving trading and fishing fleet found safe harbour and formed. With other ships from the southeast, the nucleus of the English navy, which led to the confederation of the sink ports. Each member had to provide, when required, a number of fully crewed ships for use by the Crown in the defence of England. In return the sink ports were given many privileges which led to control of the channel and its trade. The town has many famous associations. Samuel Pepys was briefly a member of Parliament for the town in 1685. John Montague, 4th Earl of Sandwich, invented the sandwich in 1792. Loth to leave the gambling tables, he asked for meat to be served between slices of bread, and Thomas Paine, author of The Rights of Man and a contributor to the American Constitution, lived in the town. Many British monarchs have visited the town, most notably Richard, Cur de Lion, on his return from the Crusades, Edward III, Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. In 1170, Thomas Becket returned from his exile in France to a rapturous welcome in Sandwich before being martyred at Canterbury. The town suffered heavily at the hands of invaders. The Vikings carried out many raids of the 9th, 10th and 11th centuries, ending in 1016, when Canute landed his army at Sandwich on his way to take the English throne. The French also inflicted much damage in raids, notably in 1216 to 1217 and again in 1457 when 4,000 men from Honfleur, now Sandwich's twinned town, almost burnt it to the ground. Between the 11th and 15th centuries the town reached the height of its fame and prosperity. Maritime trade flourished with ships unloading fine goods from Europe and the Far East on the Sandwich Keys. The port was for a time the chief centre for the export of English wool and was used by the navy and army as a base in the long running wars with France. The quay was the basis of Sandwich's prosperity and fame for centuries. From here to the sea was a wide protected river estuary known as the Sandwich Haven which formed one of the best medieval trading posts in the country. The Black Prince assembled some 700 ships here prior to embarking his army for France. The haven began silting up as early as the 16th century and now little remains of it and the sea has retracted by many hundreds of yards. From here in medieval times kings with their armies embarked for the wars in France. Fine luxurious goods such as figs, almonds, oil, honey, wine, saffron, leather and ginger were landed here, destined for all parts of England. After the silting up of the river, trade almost ceased until the 18th and 19th centuries when cargoes of timber, coal and salt were regularly landed. Boat building was also undertaken here until the early 20th century. On the opposite side of the river was once the major town and port of Stoner. Once a great rival to Sandwich, Stoner was flooded in 1365 and invaded and burnt by the French in 1389. It never recovered and the entire town has completely disappeared. In the 17th century Sandwich was a major port for emigration to the American colonies the corporation paying grants for the townspeople to settle in Virginia. By the 16th century, the river was so badly silted up that Sandwich ceased to be a major port. It declined in importance, reviving briefly in the 16th and 17th centuries 
by the immigration of Protestant refugees fleeing religious persecution. Many of the Dutch and Flemish refugees settled in Sandwich, bringing their skills as cloth makers and market gardeners. They also left their mark on the town in the many Dutch gables still to be seen. Many of its ancient buildings, erected when it was a major European trading port, have been preserved. Hello again everyone. Today I'm back in Kent and I'm doing a little three mile walk here in Sandwich on the Kent coast. I'm joined by the lovely Candice. Here she is. The, uh, the three mile walk has got a four mile extension to it as well from this book, 50 Walks in Kent. The weather today is really nice. We had a lot of hot weather here lately, like a bit, a bit of a heat wave. And now I've actually got quite a strong breeze as you can probably tell. Apologies if there is a bit windy on the audio and stuff. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pick the route up sort of a bit later on. We parked just down that way uh, in like for a t got a 24 hour ticket, and the walk starts over there down by Sandwich Key along the river store, the the river bank there. But we're gonna go and find a pub first, get something to eat. I'm starving. Get something to drink. But yeah. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get walking. <laughs> With its half-timbered houses and historic churches, Sandwich has a quiet English charm, the salt that makes you think of tea and scones and days gone by. It's hard to imagine these narrow streets echoing with the footsteps of raiders, smugglers and pirates. Yet Sandwich was once the most important port in England, the Dover of its day, and was one of the original sink ports. The sink ports pronounced sink, was the name given to the confederation of five, later seven, important ports on the southeast coast that guarded England in the days before there was an official navy. Hastings, New Romney, Dover, Hythe and Sandwich, together with Rye and Winchelsea, were important fishing and trading centres. This meant that they had plenty of men and ships that the king could press into service whether his family wanted free transport to Europe or to gather a force to repel invaders. It was convenient for the monarch and in those days no one would argue. Sandwich was of importance as it occupied a strategic position on the coast and was frequently raided by the Danes and the French. The quay at Sandwich, now so quiet, would have bustled in those days as fighting men embarked for Europe and ships laden with valuable cargoes of silks, spices and wine were unloaded. It would have been intimidating too, as smugglers and pirates operated from here, attracted by the rich pickings on offer. All the ports had a violent reputation, however their power and influence was not to last. A terrible storm in 1287 permanently altered the coastline, the sea began to retreat and the harbour at Sandwich and other ports eventually became so choked with silt that they could no longer be used. After a permanent navy was established, the privileges of the sink ports were revoked and Sandwich sank back into relative obscurity. Sandwich Bay Nature Reserve extends north and south of the River Store and includes dune pasture, salt marsh and 900 acres of beach and tidal mudflats. It is the last remaining complex of these habitats in Kent and supports a wealth of flora and fauna from sea holly and wild asparagus to rare migrant birds like spotted crakes and goshawks. The Saxon Shore Way goes across Royal St George's Golf Course which was founded in 1887 
and this famous Lynx course has hosted numerous Open Championships with such famed winners as Walter Hagen, Bobby Locke and Sandy Lyle. From here is the original earth wall known as the Bulwark, though its wooden palisade has long gone. It was at this point that a great battle was fought with the French in 1457 before they broke through and sacked the town. At the end of the Bulwark is a small road bridge that has replaced the old sand down gate which once stood there. Traces of the fortifications can still be seen. Beyond Sandown Gate, the earth fortifications continue as the Mill Wall. Three windmills stood here until the late 19th century. The last surviving burnt down in 1896. The walls continue round the town, eventually returning to the river near the Canterbury Gate. Sandwich has a remarkable history of violent raids and invasions, especially by the Vikings and the French. Finally, in 1385, it was decided that the town should be fortified and the town was entirely walled. The walls were actually built of a variety of material. The riverfront was defended by a strong wall of brick and stone, while the landward side fortifications were made up of earth mounds, wooden palisades, dry ditch and moat, with the gates being built of stone. Edward IV instituted a tax on all ships docking in Sandwich to pay for the upkeep of the walls. St Peter's Church in Sandwich stands on an ancient religious site, probably going back to Saxon times. The present building dates from Norman times, although it has been altered on many occasions, hence the architectural variety. The rare 13th century crypt at the East End is only open by appointment. In 1661 the tower collapsed, taking the south aisle with it. This is now the site of the memorial garden, which you can enter from the park. St Peter's Church is believed to have been destroyed during a French raid of 1216, after which it was rebuilt by Carmelite monks from Normandy. Most of the building is 14th century, though some Norman fragments remain. The south aisle was completely destroyed when the tower collapsed in 1661. The tower was rebuilt by Flemish refugees using bricks made from the haven mud and surmounting it with a Flemish style cupola. The church is now in the care of the redundant church's fund. Dutch refugees using their distinctive style of architecture repaired the damaged church and tower and used the church for some generations. St Peter's ceased to be a separate parish in 1948 and the lovely Norman church of St Clement is now the parish church, but St Peter's lives on as a historic building and a centre for community activity. The medieval practice of ringing the curfew bell at 8pm is still carried on from St Peter's. This announced the time for geese and pigs to be turned out into the streets to consume household rubbish. The 5am goose bell warned householders to retrieve their animals before they were impounded.
The unusual war memorial designed by Omar Ramsden with its fine bronze of St George and the Dragon pays tribute to the men of Sandwich who died in both World Wars, Korea and the Falklands. Market Street has been the centre of Sandwich since Saxon times and from the 13th century was the town's fish market. Most of the properties are timber framed with later frontages added in varying architectural styles. A one-time ironmongery store, the Golden Key, has some intricately carved figures on its facade, many representing this former trade. Built in 1579, but with many later additions, the Guildhall contains many relics of Sandwich's illustrious past. The courtroom on the ground floor is an exact replica of the first Guildhall which stood next to St Peter's Church. It has a collapsible jury box which, when not in use, can be concealed within the panelling. A 13th century oak screen supports the Queen Beasts, a lion and a dragon which were carved to decorate the town gate for the visit of Queen Elizabeth in 1572. This visit is, almost, is also commemorated by a stained glass window depicting the mayor offering one of the town's maces to the Queen as a token of loyalty and dressed on this one occasion only in a scarlet robe instead of the black one normally worn as a sign of mourning for Mayor John Drury killed by the French in the raid of 1457. Here stood Newgate, one of the five medieval entrances into the walled town. It was probably built to guard the Dover Road in 1385 when the first fortifications were erected, but it was rebuilt by the tailors and drapers of Sandwich in 1541. It was sold and demolished in the 18th century. The old town walls continue from here as the Rope Walk. After the wooden palisade was removed, the flat top of the earth wall was used for ship's rope making, which required a long straight stretch for walking out, where the strands of the rope were braided and made taut. In New Street, Thomas Paine lived and worked as a stay maker between 1759 and 1760, before he wrote his political pamphlets which influenced both the French and American revolutions. After the War of American Independence, he helped to write the Constitution of 1787 and later became a member of the French Revolutionary Assembly. Alongside New Street runs the Delft Stream, which was used as the town's water supply and sewerage from 1206 until 1894 when piped water was installed in the town only after the mayor died of typhoid. Pollution was a big problem and there were strict laws about where to water animals and wash clothes. Houses by the stream were ordered to glaze their windows, an expensive luxury at the time to stop rubbish being thrown into the stream. On the townward side of the rope walk is the Tudor house called Whitefriars. It is built on the grounds of the Carmelites, Priory of Whitefriars, founded in 1272 and demolished during the Reformation by Henry VIII. Richborough Fort was once the gateway to Roman Britain. Claudius's legions landed here in AD 43 before launching their invasion and you can still see their defensive ditches. Known as Rotupe by the Romans, the fort guarded what was then the main port of entry to Britain. Inside the fort you can see a large masonry cross dating back to AD 80.